Now moving to the AIMS protocol, AIMS protocol says that uh, AIMS protocol actually, you know, compares and it uh, very clearly, very beautifully tells that whatever these Western guidelines tell us for a resource limited setting like our country, it is not always possible to follow these guidelines blindly. So they say that uh, though recommended by American Academy of Pediatrics, universal screening with TSB in every child, what they say is that in every child you do TSB. In our country, it is not always possible, right? It is a, first of all, invasive method. You are taking out blood from a child. Second, lab facilities are not always available. And thirdly, it will uh, impose a unnecessary burden on both the child as well as the healthcare system. So every child, look at the, India is the most populous country. Look at our birth rate. It is coming down, but still very high. So you can't do TSB in every child. Either you do in all or you don't do or you do in only high risk groups. So in high risk groups are the, you know, areas where we should be targeting the bilirubin assessment, right? So what does the AIMS protocol tell you? AIMS protocol gives you an approach about this, right? What does AIMS protocol say? AIMS protocol says that whenever a child is born in an institution, in every child, you perform visual assessment. I'm writing in short, VA. You perform visual assessment in the child every 8 to 12 hourly. When do you do it? In the first 3 to 5 days. You do visual assessment every 8 to 12 hourly under natural sunlight, preferable, if not possible, white light, not yellow light. And you do it every uh, in the first 3 to 5 days. Along with that, if there is facility for TCB measurement available, so plus minus you will do TCB measurement also, if available. In bracket I am writing, if available. Right? And after that, any time you find that serious jaundice is available, you evaluate that. So, you watch for, when you are doing this assessment, you watch for serious jaundice in the patient. Now, what is this concept of serious jaundice? Before I write the features, understand that serious jaundice is a concept given by AIMS protocol for resource limited setting. <laughs> Cloherty, Abri, App guidelines, NICE guidelines. Do not talk about it. Serious jaundice is a concept given by AIMS protocol applicable in resource limited setting. The protocol clearly says that child having any one of the following. If the child is having visible jaundice visible jaundice in the first 24 hours visible jaundice in first 24 hours or child having TCB value you did TCB value it is equal to or more than 95th centile for the age or any neonatal jaundice with encephalopathy any CNS features is present in the child or any yellow staining of palms and soles. If any one or more of these are present, we call it as serious jaundice. Any one out of these four features which I wrote, it is considered to be serious jaundice. So we watch for serious jaundice by performing the visual assessment and plus minus TCB value. Now there will be two possibilities, serious jaundice present and serious jaundice is absent. Whenever you are doing, right? You are checking every 8 to 12 partly. If the serious jaundice is present, the first step in the management will be start phototherapy. Start phototherapy and then send the blood for, send for TSB and decide what is to be done. Right? In case serious jaundice is not present, you will decide clinically if you need to perform TSB measurement or not and decide clinically and then send for TSB and decide whether you could need to continue phototherapy or you need to stop phototherapy. And after TSB, you will determine the cause. You will determine the cause and provide supportive care. And follow up whatever you have to do. Now, if you compare this with the protocol given, I have deliberately slightly eased out and modified the protocol without compromising on the principles. Why is it so? Because, see, you understand. I'll give you a scenario what happens in resource limited setting like our country. Uh, you take out the sample, many of the sophisticated medical colleges, there is a centralized system of processing of the sample. But in a vast majority of medical colleges and even government hospitals and some private hospitals also, what will happen is, see a scenario. It's too many kids in the ward or in the nursery, 
I take out sample of a child, I give it to the attendant of the child and I ask him to get it done from the lab. Lab is usually at a distance. Now this person, there is a possibility, he will take the sample, not deposit on time or the lab will displace it or the report will come late. In the meanwhile, the child actually had jaundice. It was likely unconjugated jaundice and it kept on increasing and we only waited for TSB report to come so we can start phototherapy. This is wrong because we cannot depend. It is a resource limited setting. So any feature of serious jaundice, if it is visible, we first start with the therapy, phototherapy. Send the blood after that. If the report is fine, you stop phototherapy. If you need to continue, you continue phototherapy. If you think of exchange transfusion zone, you continue phototherapy and arrange for exchange transfusion. You understand? If it is a serious jaundice, starting therapy early should not be prevented by the report coming late. That is the principle behind it. It is, I know, very, very, you know, uh, something debatable. But here, early therapy is beneficial because we are a resource limited setting. That is something practical that has been implied. So I will summarize again what this protocol is trying to say. Any child who's born in a institution, you perform visual assessment every 8 to 12 early and uh, TCB if it is a win. Till what time it is done? First 3 to 5 days. When we are checking, what are we looking for? We are looking for serious jaundice in the child. Four features are mentioned. Anytime any of these features is present, you say child has serious jaundice. In serious jaundice, first start phototherapy, then send blood for detailed TSP. If it is not serious jaundice, every time that you are assessing, clinically decide. Any feature of alkaplopathy, any other thing, clinical suspicion you need to do, uh, check for TSB. If you find it, you do the TSB. Otherwise, you simply observe the child, right? Once the TSB report comes, then based upon that, you take the final call. You have already started with phototherapy to continue it, to stop it, or to prepare for exchange transfusion, right? So remember, if the MCQ says serious jaundice present, what is the first step in management? Start phototherapy, then send the blood for TSB, right? In the Western countries, what they do? They send TSB for every child. Report comes early, they decide uh, phototherapy needed or not. In our resource limited setting, serious jaundice concept we apply. Any serious jaundice present, you first, how would you know serious jaundice? These are the features. None of them is employing an actual blood report. Any serious jaundice present, you first start phototherapy, then send the blood for TSP, right? This is what the protocol, the guidelines say. Remember this. There is an MCQ on this. There is a past MCQ in NEET PG. There is a past MCQ in uh, not INI. AIMS SS when it used to happen before INI SS came, right? Before the protocol 2019 came, they had actually put around 2019 only, there was a question on this.